All right, welcome back to our 14th lesson, our 14th lesson. So um, this lesson has a lot to do with understanding the difference between what we believe that leads into a belief and something that turns into as a truth. So for instance, you know, when we have a thought over and over and over again, the same thought over and over again, what happens, it can, can turn into a belief. And this belief, you um, express it in your life without really examining it. And for whatever reason, over time, it becomes not just true, because it, it may have started, the thought was true, but over time, it becomes a truth. A truth is something that um, is not just one-sided or one-pointed. It has multifaceted, and it can be applied in different scenarios. So the belief that we're going to take a look at tonight has to do with something that I know each and every one of you have done in your life, and you probably have instructed your clients or been instructed in them. And it's this thing called buttock squeezes, buttock squeezes, you know, where you squeeze the glutes, right? You understand what I'm talking about? Thumbs up if you understand, right? You've probably done it over and over, right? And one of the beliefs that, you know, we have, I come from the uh, training in physiotherapy and, and one of the exercises we give is these glute or isometric gluteal sets. And we tell patients, oh, this is your, this is your strengthening program, right? This is your strengthening program. And it is true. It is true that buttock squeezes do help strengthen and um, help us use that gluteus maximus. Okay. Well, maybe not. I, that's inappropriate to say. We don't know if it helps us use it. We just know that you can contract the glutes and they might get a little bit bigger or not. But over time, it becomes a, a belief that this is how we strengthen. And the only thing that the glute squeeze is good for is actually strengthening. So tonight, we're going to uncover and maybe really understand the truth behind buttock squeezes and what does the squeeze do for us functionally? Where can it take us? Okay. So in tonight's lesson, you'll, um, you'll need your mat and you'll also need a chair, a chair that has um, a chair back and four legs to it. Now, a lot of this lesson uh, in its originality took place um, laying on the floor and sitting on the floor. So you can certainly do that. But I've got to tell you, I use this lesson or parts of this lesson in our gate class that I teach, but I also use it um, for our um, over 80 folks that I teach. All right, a class. So it's quite, quite interesting and can be done totally in a chair. All right. So, but before we sit, we stand. And let's do a little assessment. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to start to walk around the room. Just walk in one direction and then you turn around and then you walk in the other direction. So you get a sense that you have some space. And I'm going to ask you a question. When you walk, are you, are you paying more attention in your walk to the leg that's moving forward or the leg that's moving behind? So it's just when you think walk, walk, step, 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 are you drawn toward the leg in front or in the leg in back? So make a decision on that. The foot stepping forward or the foot stepping back. Okay. All right, good. Now, come and sit in your chair or 
lie on your back on the floor, whichever you like. And as you do that, I'm going to take the time to um, spotlight a couple of folks. So if you don't want your spotlight on, then please feel free to um, turn off your camera feed. Okay, do those in the front. All right. Good. So we have some folks in the seated position. We have some folks laying down. So this will be perfect on the review. Because you have lots of different choices there. So if you're in your chair, you're sort of at the forward part of the chair seat so that you could lean back into the chair back. And for those of you who are lying on the floor, lie with your legs long. Mm-hmm. And for those of you in the chair, you too can kind of stretch your legs out, right? You can stretch your legs out as you lean back into the chair. And let's begin to squeeze the buttocks, all right? So you can begin to contract them, and then you let it go. So we're going to do a lot of squeezing. And if that's, if you're sitting in a chair and that's too uncomfortable for you to lean back, well, adjust your bottom on the chair seat so it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. So you're not hurting your back or anything like that. So it's just leaning back, you squeeze and then you release. Squeeze and you release. So the key is that you, for if you're in the chair, you really want to have your legs extended out. So that means your knees are a little straight, your weight bearing on your heels. And as you do that, squeeze, release, squeeze, release, you can start to get a sense that there's a part of your pelvis that begins to lift. All right. Now pause, change your position, let your knees bend a little bit more so that your feet are under your knees. So you're laying on your back, draw your knees up. And from this position here, begin to squeeze the buttocks with the knees bent. Just notice the quality of that squeeze a couple times. That's it. Now, pause. Now, let the feet, let the feet and the knees come close together. Let them both come close together. And now squeeze the glutes from that perspective squeeze, release. And I want you to try to assess in which position with the knees bent like this, or with the legs stretched out, do you have a sense that there is a, a much more robust kind of contraction in your buttock muscles? Is it when it's stretched out? The knees are relatively extended long out in front of you, or is it when it's bent? Mm -hmm. Good. And then the knees come close together and the feet close together. In what position do you have a sense that the pelvis is actually lifting from the floor a little bit? Or for you in the seated position, you feel a little taller. Okay, good. Now, let that go. Now, sit up from the back of your chair and sit up from the floor. Put your hands behind you so that you are posturing yourself or supporting yourself a little bit with your hands. Stretch out your legs, mm -hmm. good. And begin to, the feet are slightly apart there, begin to once again, squeeze the buttocks together and then release. Squeeze and release. Do you find that you have to use your hands to do that? Or can you, can you feel how the hands get light and the hands get a little heavy based upon the squeeze and then let go. And we let go each time so that we can have a, a more fuller squeeze. Good. 
Now, bring the feet and the knees together really close and squeeze from here. Feel how if you're stretched out on the floor and the feet are together, you can feel that the squeeze causes a different kind of roll in the pelvis. If you're sitting, there's a more of ascension of you, torso getting longer, head moving up towards the ceiling. Good. Now, let that go. Bring your right hand, just sit up for a moment, release your hands. If you get any tension in your hands, remember that strategy we did by just wiping from your wrist and your forearm down. Mm-hmm. All right. So have the right hand in front of your lap and the left hand behind you. So you're leaning a little more off to the left and onto the left hand. In the chair, you're leaning a little bit more into the chair and extend your legs long. And begin to squeeze again, both buttocks. And as you squeeze both buttocks with this configuration of your hands in this position, do you notice that one buttock cheek has a little more activation than the other? Squeeze, release, squeeze, release. All right, change over your hands with the left hand on the lap and the right hand behind. And you're on the right side of your chair or the right side of your pelvis and your buttocks. And now begin to squeeze here. Can you discriminate that one side of the glute is actually much more fuller, much more available just in this hand position? You get a better squeeze on one side than you do on the other. Good. Now let that go. Now begin to let your legs be a little further apart. So they're stretched out, but they're further apart. Good. Hands in the middle, good. And begin to, again, squeeze the glutes. And notice if the thighs themselves, do the thighs, the legs, do the ankles, is there any movement of the lower leg? Or is it all in the pelvis? Or is it all just in the glute? Now put your hands behind you, lean on your hands again. And again, squeeze the glutes and then release. And notice if the thighs themselves can roll outward a little bit. And then when you release, there's the letting go and there's relatively a little inward. Mm-hmm, good. All right. Now, what if I ask you to bring the soles of your feet together? Bring the soles of your feet together. That means their knees are going to bend and the knees are going to fall outward, right? So the soles of the feet relatively touch one another. And from this position here, get a sense of the robustness of your glutes as you squeeze the glutes and then let it go. And as you squeeze the glutes, can you get a sense that the knees spread just a little bit? And then as you let go of the squeeze, they come together. Mm hmm. Good. 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 Now, let that go. Now, if you're sitting in your chair, what I'd like you to do, well, I'll, the people who are laying, are sitting on the floor, what I'd like you to do is to come and stand on both knees. So if you're sitting on the floor, come to be on both knees with your knees underneath your hips. And if you're sitting in the chair, 
begin to draw one foot underneath your chair as though that one leg is behind and the knee is pointing down in the direction of the chair to the floor. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, just like that. Good. You don't feel like you're going to fall off or anything like that. And if you want to do it on the floor and you want to have your chair right by there so you can support yourself, you can do that. That's right. So then if you're in the chair, one knee hangs down, one foot is standing. If you're on both knees, you are on the floor. That's right. Good. Now begin to squeeze. I will put both hands. If it's convenient for you, put your hands on your buttocks on the fleshy part of your buck, buttocks mm -hmm. and begin to squeeze the glutes again. Squeeze and release. So if you're on the floor, you can get a sense that as you squeeze the glutes, it has an impact in the pelvis. Now, for some of you, this could actually really start to feel a very unfamiliar pulling sensation in the fronts of your thigh mm -hmm. or along the outside of the thigh. It's a squeeze and a release. And for you on the floor, you can start to get a sense that the pelvis itself, the pubic bone begins to move forward out into the room as the glutes squeeze. Mm -hmm. And for you on the chair and for you on the floor, you might also get a sense that can the belly button, can the belly button actually begin to lift, to raise up in the direction of your face? Huh, okay. Now let's stop for a moment, stop for a moment. Let me see you do that familiar tilt so that you tilt your pelvis in such a way so that the pubic bone kind of comes up near the face away from the ground. So you're just tilting and rocking the pelvis back. That's right. That's right. Good. Now, every time you start to do that, can you, can you pull your abdomen in when you do that? So you pull in your tummy and you make that kind of tilt. Pull the tummy up and in as the pubic bone. All right, stop. Now try to do the tilt again without using your tummy muscles. Sometimes it gets really hard. Once you activate the tummy muscles, it's very hard to have the pubic bone come up. So it's not that we're curling down, Gail. We're really trying to stay long and tall there. We're not curling. We're not folding in the torso. That's right. We're bringing the pelvis up from the bottom. Feel how that's a very different kind of quality for you. Good. And so let that go and come back just a couple of times. Let's squeeze the glutes a little bit more. Squeeze the glutes a little bit more and release, squeeze and release. Good, okay, all right. Now, let that go. Now, let's everyone come to lie on the floor for a moment. Just lie on your back, your choice. Knees bent, side, lying. So often when I find that when I ask someone to, to squeeze the glutes, they feel like they're clenching, kind of like clenching the teeth, but it's almost like a scooping. Think of it as a scooping of the contraction rather than um, this tightening or clenching. And the other thing I notice is that we get so enamored by trying to really squeeze so tightly that we forget to spread our awareness out to see what is happening in the other aspects of ourselves, like our breath, like the role that the squeeze has in our pelvis, 
the role that the squeeze has on our legs. So your legs are stretched out here. There's space between your feet. So begin to squeeze the buttocks. You scoop them together and then you let go. And we're going to find which position here with the legs long like this does the quality of robustness, the amount of fibers that can contract. Does it feel the, the, the biggest contraction here? Or pause for a moment, bend your knees. And begin to come back and squeeze the butt here. And then if you bring the soles of your feet together, let the knees fall out and squeeze the glutes here. For you, where is, where is your best quality contraction? And then now let the legs be long, but keep the ankles together and the knees together and squeeze from here. That's right, scoop them and release. Now stretch your legs just a little bit, a little further apart, and then try it one more time. As the legs are stretched out, you see that the, this position here really allows the glutes to be activated in a way that's very different when the knees are bent or, or held outward, right? Mm -hmm. You see that this, this is the position that actually ascends the pelvis off of the floor. And it actually straightens the leg, doesn't it? Straightens the leg. Okay. Now, roll to one side. And bring yourself to back on both knees. Let's everybody be on our knees, if that's possible for you. If not, you can go back to your chair and you can change over the legs, but you're standing on both legs. Your feet are stretched out behind you. You have your toenails down is another way of saying that. And it's not a wide stretch. It's a very, very narrow. The knees are underneath your shoulders. Mm -hmm. And then begin to contract the buttocks again and release. And good. And you can feel how it sends the pubic bone forward. Mm -hmm. All right, now put the right foot forward. And so if you're sitting in a chair, this means that the left knee will be down on the floor or behind the chair, that's it. And so you wanna bring that knee down, Ingrid, just a little bit more so that it, well, you can stay in the middle of your chair. You can stay in the middle of the chair. Mm -hmm. Draw your left foot behind you. And you're doing, that's right. And you're gonna let that left knee hang down in the direction of the floor and everybody has their right foot standing. So if you put your hands on your butt buttocks again, and you begin to once again, squeeze the glutes, really contract them. Can you get a sense of one glute is, they're both working, right? But one of them is so much more powerful, isn't it? The hand that is the right hand under the buttock is very different than the left hand. Mm -hmm. All right, put the knee back on the floor and see how that right buttock contracts now. 
you can feel that it's very, it's, they both are contracting very strongly now, right? And then now bring the left foot forward. Hands on your buttock. If you're sitting in a chair, that means the right knee drops zero down right to the floor. And if it can't do that, that is a-okay. And begin to contract the buttocks here. And feel how the right buttock is much more activated, much more fuller in its ability to contract and release than the left. When the knee is bent and you're standing on the foot, the buttock muscle itself is stretched out over a longer range. And it's much more difficult to find that robustness, that, that quality of contraction. Good. All right, now let that go. And just come and lie on your back. You can start to make that distinction in your mind, which buttock is more effective, more quality contraction. The, the buttock, when it squeezes, is more available when the knee is on the floor than on the side where the foot is on the floor. Can you give me a thumbs up to let me know if that is your experience? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So the buttock muscles themselves have the ability to pull that upper leg back, back into what we call leg extension. The role of the squeeze is to change the possibility of that upper leg and pelvis. So one last time on your knees. And if you don't like that, then you can either just sit in the chair, that's fine, or just lie there on the floor and follow along with me in your mind. You can certainly continue on with the gluteal squeezes. So I would just want to see if you really made up your mind about this quality, which buttock is more effective, all right? So if you begin to put your hands on your buttocks, mm -hmm. and now your toenails are down, would you agree? Your toenails are down on the ground, and you squeeze again. Mm-hmm. All right, a couple times. Now, I want you to change and put your toes in a position that we call the runner's position so that the toenails are off of the floor and that you're bending at your toes. And, and that's right. Holding your hands on the buttocks and, and now begin to contract the buttocks. Now, this may even be another level of stretch or pull that you're not used to in your thighs, for sure. Mm -hmm. But it's not about the pain and it's not about eliciting pain. There is a change in the quality of whether the toenails are down or the toenails are lifted. So go back to, there we go, feet, toes on the floor. Good. Mm-hmm and bring your right foot forward and squeeze the glutes again, squeeze the glutes again and feel that the left glute can be more available, more powerful. It's like the surface area of the glute is more powerful. It's not that we're individually squeezing the left glute, we're still squeezing both of them together but the right glute is stretched out in a very long position and it's hard to really get it to contract. All right, switch over your legs. 
Left foot. Good. Hands on the glute. Squeezing. Does it make any difference if you decide to take a runner's toe position with the knee on the ground or with the toenails? So change the position of the ankle or the position of the heel. All right, good. Now let that go and lie on your back. So one of the mm, hopes that I have is that you're beginning to discover that the experiences of these last, these interventions here, it's the quality of the buttock contraction of that standing knee or the knee that hangs down is much more effective. It's much more um, available in its fullness of the muscle to contract than it is when the hip is bent or the foot is standing. And that's one of the roles of, the, of butt squeezes is to pull that hip into extension. All right, now come to sitting. We'll start first with sitting in the chair. And we'll lean back a little bit in the chair. You can lean on your back or you could lead with your lean on your hands, that's fine. The legs are relatively a little long, extended out in front of you. So have the intention that the knees can be uh, a little apart, if you will. They, they can fold out. So it's not the feet that are apart, but the knees are. So as you start to contract the glutes again, the, the knees themselves, the thighs can roll out and you could actually roll out on the outside edges of your feet. Mm -hmm. So the knees, they, they grow apart a little bit. The thighs, they, they rotate out. You look down at your legs, your thighs, your feet, and start to get a look down into the arch, that instep of the foot, and see if as you squeeze the glutes, see if you could lift the instep or the arches of the foot as though your, maybe your big toe comes a little closer to the heel. So it's the scooping of the glutes that kind of scoop the legs and roll the legs outward. Mm -hmm. Lifting the arches. Mm -hmm. So it's the middle part of the arch. That's right. Now, as you contract and release, contract and release, make it a little less movement of the knees apart and feel it more in the arch. That's right. So if you slow down the chain at which the contraction flows down through, then more can reach the feet instead of just going out to through the knees. So, if we begin to stand up and do this same thing of contracting our glutes from a standing position, let's see if we can facilitate this kind of rolling of our legs and our lifting of our arch. It's a very unusual kind of maneuver. So, we want to have our knees just a little bit soft. They're not locked out. You can put your hands on your glutes 
and think about even squeezing your pushing your palms and your gluteal cleft together. You could think of that to activate the glutes. Now you have to really let it go before you start the next repetition, right? Feldenkrais, Dr. Feldenkrais was very specific and you, you, in order to get the fullness of an experience, you have to restart again. So you absolutely have to let go. Then you allow this gathering in of the glute, the rolling just a little bit of your long leg outward onto the outside edge. And then you let the glute go. And then the arches, you could fall back onto them. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, put, put all your, lift your right heel. Let's stop the glute squeeze. Lift your right heel from the ground. So you can keep your foot on the ground. That's fine. Just the heel. And only start to squeeze start to squeeze the glute again, both of them, right? And see if unilaterally one-sided as you squeeze the glutes that it could still have that same quality of lifting of the arch. Or do you find that you're boom, falling down into the floor? Or is it like there's, there's no lift in the system? That's it, Ingrid, that's it. There's a little lift. Squeeze of the glute, you've got it. Good. Switch over feet so that you're standing on the right foot. Mm -hmm. Good. One side's a little different than the other, of course. Good. Now, stop that and walk around. Walk around and notice in your walking if you are drawn to the leg that is the forward leg or the leg that's moving back. All right, stop there. Stand anywhere you'd like. Put both hands on the glute. Now, from the bottom up, we're not, I want you to draw your right big toe in toward your arch as though that you could lift the arch of the foot up and then put it back down. So you can scoop your foot. Some people even get a cramp in the bottom of the foot because they're not used to bringing the toes back toward the heel. There you go, just a couple of times. You can put the emphasis on the big toe towards the arch, lifting of the arch. Good. All right, now let that go. And a couple of times, let's squeeze the glutes, release the foot, just squeeze the glutes. Good. Pause. Now, let me come back to the stomach muscles again, our abdominals, okay? So begin to let the pelvic tilt from that position right there, just a small, it's a very small little rocking of the pelvis as though that the pubic bone could start to lift up, right? You don't really need your tummy muscles to do that. Okay. Now, engage your abdominal muscles, pull them in as though that you could initiate that pubic bone coming up, as though the lower abdominal muscles would lift that pubic bone forward and up. Mm -hmm. And notice as the pubic bone starts to move forward, there'll be a time when the glutes could actually start to squeeze a little bit more right? So the pubic bone could start to lift, the glutes could start to come together, and then release the glutes, release the abdominals. Good. 
Now let it go, just walk around, walk again. And come to lie on your back. Your legs are long, your feet are apart, and begin to squeeze the glutes. And notice if the movement that you have available there is more than what you began with. And do you feel that the, the tissue of the musculature of the glute itself kind of bubbles up and lifts the pelvis from the floor? It might be a little bit more clear. Okay, let that go. Now, the right buttock only. Begin to, to wrap your mind around squeezing and activating that scooping up of the right glute and then let it go. The right glute and let it go. You can feel it, it takes the pelvis in a place that it literally lifts the right side of the pelvis and looks like it's turning or rolling towards the left. And then you let it go. Okay. How about the left? Feel the quality of the left glute. So the glute itself has a roll in the pelvis and an extending of the leg. That's right. And then now begin to alternate, right glute, left glute, right glute, left glute. Feel this rolling that the glute, that aspects of your muscles behind drive the pelvis forward. Mm -hmm. And if you begin to make it a little quicker, and a little lighter, you'll begin to have this kind of lift lower, lift lower, lift lower, lift lower. Mm -hmm. Good. Let that go. Good. and begin to sit up. And we're going to sit on the floor with your legs outstretched out in for front of you. Mm -hmm. Good. Leave your hands forward. Let your legs spread a little bit. That's comfortable for you. And from this position here, begin to once again, contract the glutes and release. Feel how it's a different quality here in sitting with the legs spread out. It's like the quality of glute is just not there. It's still important, but it's, it's just doesn't reach its maximum potential because of the position of the bend in the hip itself. All right. Now begin to posture yourself and try to lift a leg off the floor. If you were going to lift one leg off the floor, which would you do? You would kind of lean back and try to lift the leg. Okay. Some people would lean on their hands and try to lift the leg. All right. Now, can you start to 
balance on your sit bones in such a way that you rock back on your pelvis just a little bit so that you could lift a leg. So it'd be easier to lift the leg. That's right. So there's a little rocking on the ischium, the sit bone. Good. All right. Now come back and begin to, once again, just scoop the both of glutes, scoop them up and release. Squeeze the glutes and release. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Now put your hands behind you. The legs are out in front of you. Now, if they're too far apart, you'll soon know. So you may feel comfortable to adjust them a little more narrow if they're really far apart. And I want you to kind of lean your, your whole torso weight onto your left side of your buttock. All right. So it's like the right buttock can be a little bit forward, excuse me. So the right buttock can be a little bit light so that you could actually move or step the right buttock forward as though that you were going to step forward with your ischial tuberosity and then draw it back. So it's like the hokey pokey. You're going to put your right buttock in, you take your right buttock out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that reference. Okay. Good. So it's as though that the weight is on the left glute, the left sit bone, and you are moving that right leg forward and back. And I want you to look down at your groin, look down at that pubic area. And if you have a, like a zipper or a seam in your pants, can you start to get a sense that the tip of that seam, actually, as you move forward with the right buttock, that seam moves to the left. And then if you drag your right buttock back, it moves, that seam moves to the right. Can you confirm that for me? Yep, there you go. Good, good. All right. And then let that go. Now, let me see you rock onto the right buttock and the right sit bone and begin to withdraw that left buttock back. It's almost like you bring it back and you stamp it or, and then you lift it back up and then you return it back to its original place. And as you do that, you can start to confirm that that seam in the front actually moves to the left as it moves back that sit bone. Good. Thank you. And then it returns back to the center. Now, how about if you walk that leg forward? So the knee is straight relatively, but you're scooting from your sit bone. Mm -hmm. Good. And then alternate walking backwards, lifting one sit bone, moving it back, then the other sit bone. And I want you to look down at that seam and confirm for yourself that when you pull back, so too does that seam pull that lower part. Good. Good. Let it go. Lie on your back. And again, activating the glutes, squeezing both of them together and release. Does the quality of that even improve the lifting of the pelvis from the ground? It, it is allowing the pubic bone to be carried forward towards the ceiling, isn't it? Uh-huh. 
and then one more time, alternating right glute squeeze, then left glute squeeze. Feeling that squeeze, that's right. And then start to narrow your legs just a little bit more, just a little bit more, and then alternate that squeeze. There you go. Find it from more of a narrow position. When the legs are narrow, that's when we actually need the function of our glutes. Mm -hmm. The glutes, they carry our leg into hip extension. Our glutes carry the pelvis. They help retract the pelvis. They free, they free the forward leg to move effortlessly during our walking. Good. All right. Now roll to your side. Come to standing. And a couple of times. See what it's like to activate the gluteal set, the buttock squeeze from that position. Notice how your stance is a little bit smaller, actually, the width between your feet. Yeah. And you squeeze the glutes. And the pelvis can move forward or the legs can move into extension without really the back moving into extension when we squeeze both of them together. Good. Now take it into walking. And as you take that into walking, can you be drawn in your attention to not just the leg that is moving forward, but the leg that is moving behind behind you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Is it more clear in your awareness? You see, the, the truth behind the glutes, the buttock squeeze, is that it is a powerful leg extender that frees the back so the back doesn't have to extend up against gravity. The glute has this, all right? It's a powerful adjuster of the pelvic girdle that allows the leg that you're standing on, the leg that's moving back, it brings the pelvis or retracts the pelvis back. And it makes that leg that's moving forward so light and it just kicks more forward. And the last thing, as you come to sit in your chair, The other truth about the glute is that these buttock squeezes, the buttock squeeze itself or the activation of the glute is the, the keystone. It's, it's the central pattern. It's almost like it generates the pattern for walking so that the nervous system knows, oh, oh, we're, we're gonna be up against gravity. So as you're sitting there with your feet on the ground, you can start to feel that as you start to activate the glute, there is equally a also downward pressure going down into the bottom of the feet, right? And then you let the glute go and the pressure is gone in the feet. So the glutes begin to squeeze and they can also facilitate a downward pressure. It's not as great of a contraction as it was when the legs were extended, but there is value in doing these buttock squeezes with the hip in this bent position because it starts to talk to the pattern of standing, overcoming gravity. It talks, talks to the pattern of being able to stand on one leg. And now if you reverse it so that the feet start to press down, you will still continue to feel that rising, the torso rising a little taller, but the glutes aren't as available, right? Not yet. Good. Let it go. One last time. Glute squeeze. 
and the downward pressure in the feet. Good. And then release. Good. So I just didn't want you to think that there wasn't value of doing glute squeeze when you have this bent position at the hip. It's just the glute is stretched out over a longer surface area, but it still activates. So someone who has trouble coming up over against gravity and walking, the glute squeeze is, does more than just strengthen your butt muscle. It prepares the leg, pulling the leg into extension. That's what you really want to take home today. Okay. All right, good. We'll let that go and we'll bring ourselves back to our Zoom room. And I am just curious, was that reference of when you're walking, um, normally I, I noticed myself when I was walking, I, I just immediately pay attention to the leg that's moving forward. And I was delightfully surprised for myself that after I do this lesson, that it was like, oh my gosh. I, I, can, I can very clearly feel the leg that's moving behind. And I never even thought about that leg moving behind. I, I didn't know if you could share your experience of that or uh, did it make a difference? If not, that's good too. Yes, Miss Heather. Yeah, it was a game changer. I am. Um didn't even feel my front leg go forward after. And I only felt my front leg go forward. And, you know, it wasn't, it was three quarters of the way through the lesson that I realized that when you had this, the last time you had a squat, we <laughs> felt the back leg and I, and I did not feel that front leg. And there was, it was a freeing, a remarkable freeing. Remarkable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me see. I think Susan said something here. Yes, it was very different. The last time we walked, she says, so different. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Carol? Miss Manju? Uh, I noticed that my feet are rolling nicely on the floor. Ah, ah. The feet are rolling. The feet are rolling. Yes, yeah. Beautifully. Yeah. There's Thank some, you. You bet. You bet. Something so wonderful about hip extension, which allows more ankle bending, which allows more the foot to say, oh, I can cover more surface area. Good. Mm -hmm. Margaret says, my attention was on the extending leg, but I can the beginning and now both. Ah, that's great. Helena? It's so much easier to rise from sitting by squeezing. The other one, I, is, I whispered to you, I had to keep going. To, I felt like I had to urinate, but I wouldn't let myself go. I'm glad. <laughs> right. Okay. You know, there's, there's something you brought up there that when you go from sit to stand, and um, I know there, um, like I used to, as a young therapist, I used to say, okay, you know, you, you want to squeeze your butt when you, when you start to stand up, but that's not when the butt activates, the glute activates, because it's in its longest position, all right? So as we start to stand up, there's, remember, there's this sequence of if the glute squeezes and you felt the foot go down, did you feel that? The glute squeeze and the foot goes down. And so to get up, there has to be the foot that pushes, and then there'll be a time where the glutes will start to activate and squeeze and bring the legs into extension. So there's this coordination that you want to work with, with sit to stand. All right. So if you really want to, let's say, um, we know in our movement organization that we can make 
coming up against gravity very effortless because we can use our skeleton in a certain way. But we can also use our glutes to help us to bring our pelvis more forward that will activate that sweet little skeletal piece you're looking at. Which then also, do you have, um, do you remember, I don't know if your therapist ever said this, but every time you step on that leg, you know, squeeze your butt. <laughs> did you ever give that? I hope I, I did. You know, it's just like, and I even practiced it myself, you know, like every time I would stand on my leg and try to take a step, I would squeeze my glute and then be able to, to take another step. And, and that's, that's one I, I would hope that we could let go of as an old belief thinking system that the glute when we're walking hardly squeezes at, at all. I mean, not to that same effect, like when you're walking around, you don't feel that same quality of contraction that you get. Like when I say right squeeze, left squeeze, right squeeze, do you? It's, it's, it's not that great. Now, if I were having you to ascend up a hill, then you would start to really feel it because the leg has to go into more and more extension. Then you would feel it. All right. So it's a kind of a misinterpretation of the buttock squeeze to squeeze the leg, squeeze the butt when you're trying to stand on that leg or try to get your balance or uh, try to uh, strengthen your hip as makes the hip a little bit more um, congruent. So um, th rethink it is what I would invite you to do. Just kind of rethink that. Wendy, you said it made my pelvis more mobile with some more freedom into extension. Initially, the quads were uncomfortable. And sometimes that's why I said, you know, when, when, we, when we stand on our knees and we're lengthening our thighs in front and then squeeze, we can really start to feel some uncomfortable, unfamiliar, almost a deep kind of fascial stretching that we normally don't get when we stand on two feet. So this just lets us know that I, I, I'm not concerned about that. Now there's, there's something that's uncomfortable that moves into a range that says, Ooh, that's danger. That's painful. Ooh, that's sharp. Then, then we have to renegotiate this, but doing this in the chair with the leg underneath tucked underneath you through the, the pr opening of the chair can give a really step down experience rather than being on both at the same time. So then as the pelvis becomes more available, that means the pelvis is being carried back as long with the hip extension, then the quads say, oh, they, they don't need me anymore. You have just done a inhibition or the nervous system has says, oh, don't need it. Then it inhibits it and then becomes extension so much more available. So that was just beautiful illustration. Thank you, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Heather? Mm -hmm. um, one thing that's happened for me when I sit, um, I often am, feel like I'm just sitting on the bone of my sit bone and it's always uncomfortable and I, I need padding. And, and right now I don't have that. It's like, it's all stretched out. So it's not uncomfortable. I could sit in the church pew right now and not be uncomfortable. <laughs> You know, so, so um, what happened? Why, why is that? What, what was, what was released? Mm -hmm. So when we take, I'm going to highlight myself here. So when we, it has to actually do with here's, here's our leg and here's the pelvis. All right. So as the, the hip draws into, let me see, as the hip draws into an extension like this, so too, does the pelvis go like this? It's rotating back too. So now you start to change how you load bear across this ischium. You sit, you're sitting in a different place because you didn't build just, you didn't build muscle mass. No. <laughs> <In one> sense, <laughs> no. Right? You know, 
I mean, you, you, you have some neurogenic strength, we call that, but you don't hypertrophy and build muscle fiber. But as you start to ask the glute to, to contract, this is also contracting. So added to this truth, glute squeezes cause a change in organization of mm. where you will load bear on your buttock bone, wow. your sit bone. And that's why quality glute squeezes are important and that you take the time to have that pause before you start again, because yeah. they, they, it's, it's like a muscle, like our bicep, you, it fatigues out, it fatigues out. And yet strength training, we do take muscles to fatigue and over time it strengthens. All right. So this lesson can be quite, quite valuable for you on, on many planes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just so, so great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. And Susan wrote, I'm so glad, Manju, she mentioned that rolling of the foot. She, she says, Susan says, I've walked around while listening and I'm starting to notice greater involvement of my feet as I walk, right? Because remember the chain, the kinetic chain of improve the hip, you improve the ankle, you free the toes. They work together as a team. And that's the other truth of the glute. The glute has the potential to help you facilitate the kinetic chain and send that message to the nervous system that says, we're ready. Come on. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Ingrid? Sorry, took me a minute. Um, Great lesson for me, the so useful. And um, I'm curious about, you, you talked about going uphill and I, I liken that to going upstairs. Although stairs seem a little more challenging somehow, it's cause it's not great, you know, there's like lift, lift. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious about stairs and I'm actually curious about downhill and downstairs, which I experience as, as a lot of work in the front of my self and my quads and maybe that's how it is, but I'm starting to wonder, do the, is there something that I could be connecting with in my glutes that would be useful going downhill or downstairs um you're right in the the descent the descent is actually quadricep it's the front of the thigh it is. it is it is it is the front of the thigh being able to lower you down now where the glute is helpful is in this so that if i am I'm going to pin myself again. If I'm going downhill or down the step and I do not have the stability around as I, as I just, as I take my weight of the standing leg, it's the standing leg and the moving leg is this right one over here. Correct. So the right one's going to go down like this. And it's this left quad that's going to go down. Now, if the moment my knee starts to bend and I kick my pelvis out to the side, that's a glute problem, all right? So going downhill or down the descent, you, the, the, the glute squeeze could be a little bit helpful to kind of gauge and control that right foot descending down we don't we don't think about it going down the stairs all right because it's like one two three we, we go a little bit faster but if you want to use it for like uh facilitation or training then i would start to have the weight in the foot on the left foot the right foot's gonna come forward and then down and that's when you need just a little bit more of a glute it's like the glutes going to squeeze as you lower the
the right foot to the next step. Doing it off a yoga block is great. You know, so you're standing on a yoga block, both feet, and you just want to step the right foot off the yoga block. That can start to be very helpful because the quad's going to activate anyway. So you can kind of play around like Martin right now. Can I just highlight you, buddy? So Martin's kind of playing around with that. Right. So he's got his little yoga block there. So he's going to take his right foot and he's going to put it down. Now, if he doesn't have a lot of control, you see that little lift right there, that hip going out like that, that a lot of people do that. So he's learning just to give me a little squeeze in that glute as you go down. Now, I'm not saying don't go down every step, but we're just training the glute. Okay, then let it go, Martin, just step down. Okay, so you could use it kind of like an intervention or a another um, approximation like what we did here. So you could squeeze one glute, squeeze the other glute while you're doing some kind of movement, just kind of like we did in class. Now going uphill or up the stairs is, is very much like overcoming gravity when you are getting up out of the chair. There'll be a time when the glute can activate, but it's, we're not actually squeezing it to its maximum <laughs> because you have to let it go. So as you put that left foot on there, I want you to have this sense, Martin, that the leg is extending back, the groin is opening, that the pelvis is coming back. There you go. Did you see the quality of his movement right there? And you felt that was a little different when I gave you that information. So you move from the glute squeeze to the leg extension, which is really what the glute was supposed to do all along. But we just got confused on squeezing our mass. <laughs> you know? Thank you. Yeah. Does that make a, difference? make a difference for you too, Martin, right? Can you feel that? That's a, that's a big deal, I think, for you on that. Uh, Left side, yeah. Thanks so much. You bet. Mm -hmm. Miss Helena? So once again, it's just a reminder when we, I was learning about the sphincter muscles in uh, the Bones for Life um, two or three, because um, I feel the, the, the sphincter muscles as well engaging. And it's the sphincter muscles, they're part of the pelvic floor muscles, right? The pelvic floor, and there's just a, a section of them that are called the sphincter. But when you carry, when you carry the, 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 the leg back, you carry the pelvis back. Look, look what happens, what you do here to the pelvic floor. This is looking at it from the bottom up. So you're doing this. Do you see how that, I'm exaggerating that change, but you see the floor has to change. So you absolutely are going to have an impact. Leg extension is powerful. Not necessarily glute squeezes, but leg extension is powerful because the hamstrings are a part of that too, which is not about this lesson. But Feldenkrais, you know, the name of this lesson is, um, he named this buttocks and pelvis. He named this buttock and pelvis. And in his original Esalen series, it's number 42. And in our number 14 series here in this um, uh, series, it's, I'm going to name it the truth behind buttock squeezes. <laughs> All right the truth behind buttock squeezes. And that is a pun intended, you know, it's, it's the behind. So um, yeah, so I hope that's been very helpful for you. All right, any last comments anybody wants to make before we sign off? Yes, Martin. Hey, one of the 
like haha mo moment for me was like uh, after we did the we asked to to bring the toes towards the heel after that i felt out of power my bottom my my buttocks and without using my abdominal I don't know. I don't know if the buttocks and abdominal have to work together, but I felt like uh, before to, to do the tilting of the, the pelvis, I have to use a lot of the uh, abdominals. But after that, when I was using only the buttocks, after I reuse the toes, I don't know, I make it so easy and I felt my buttocks were so much more powerful or uh, the movement was more uh, hmm, bigger range or I don't know. How could describe Powerful, it? available, yeah. robust, yeah. Um, um, available okay. for. I, I can contract it totally. Yeah. 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 So I know. It's a yeah. nice, nice feeling. Yeah. Yeah. The, when you think about the gluteus maximus, its prime mover is, is yes, bringing the leg into extension, but. It's also, get this, right? So you're looking at me, I'm lying down. The gluteus maximum's roll also rolls the leg outward. It rolls the leg outward. And this rolling of the leg outward sometimes gets very confused. It can't roll outward when it's in an, we call this an open chain. So what happens is if you start to bring the toe to the heel as though that you could scoop, right? You could scoop, scoop, change here at the ankle. You begin to, to actually pull this whole outer line and you set it up for rolling, externally rotating. And then all of a sudden it says, oh, Oh, I can do that now. Yes, my contraction then can allow the rotation to happen. But when we are here standing on the ground, it's, it's not as clean and clear. I mean, we, we exaggerate it, but in walking, it won't be that way because in walking, the leg is going to turn inward so that the maximum pull is going to be in hip extension and in the pelvis to carry the pelvis back for the purpose of carrying the other foot forward. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful little, it's actually a little trick for the nervous system. This is like, Oh, look at that. The foot is free. The toe is free. Oh, we're going to be able to roll this whole leg. You roll it and retract it back. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's Thank wonderful. You so much. Mm. Thank mm. you so much. Okay. All righty. Well, that'll be it for tonight. And we'll see you um, next week for our last one. All righty. Okay. All right. Bye for now.